Let's welcome the gentleman from Intel. Uh, Mr. Amro received his bachelor degree in electronic engineering from University Technica Malaysia and obtained his doctorate from the same university in 2017 in the field of microwave engineering. He registered as a IEEE graduate, graduate member in Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering in IEEE Microwave Theory and Techniques Society. His current R&D interest includes microwave IF, IF applications, senior design, and power embedded system technology. He, in, he joined Intel Microelectronics as a senior platform power engineer in 2017 and to present. And Mr. Tang Yanshin received his bachelor degree in computer system engineering in 2006. He is currently working in Intel Microelectronic in the Internet of Things group as cloud-based remote debug engineer, team leader of Intel pre-PRQ products, responsible to provide technical supports and the remote platform enabling to customer. Okay, gentlemen, let's proceed with your presentation. All right, thank you, Vivian and Sohus. So, um, uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. So, and today, uh, my name is Amiro. So, I'm going to share a little bit more on our works on the power sequence measurement via automated cloud power on reset tools together with my colleague, YS, right? So what we have today is that we're going to give a brief overview uh, on what is exactly the power sequence measurement, but this is more specifically on the platform level. So it's not from uh, SOC level. And we'll a little bit elaborate uh, why is uh, power measure, uh, sequencing measurement. And then we're going to go, go through the problem that we had before we uh, offer this kind of the uh, solutions. And then the objective, uh, uh, and then move to a solution overview and the impact of the cloud power sequencing. Why we have the cloud uh, based remote debug uh, for our power sequencing. And then we're going to summarize our presentation and uh, give a kind of a acknowledgement to our uh, stakeholders. So, uh, first of all, uh, what is the power sequencing measurement? So I will want to stretch to the audience here, right? So the one that we are uh, mentioning over here, the power sequence measurement is on the platform level. That means it's on our motherboard uh, kind of applications, right? So it's not at the SOC level. And of course, SOC have their own uh, power sequencing uh, uh, process and also uh, signals, but this is uh, definitely for platform level. And then what is the power sequencing actually? Uh, power sequencing is actually the uh, uh, power sequence between the, uh, during the board bring up and also board uh, shutting down, right? When you uh, bring up your boards, right, from uh, mechanical off and then apply the power, goes to the active mode, there's a power rails and signal involved uh, between the uh, uh, process. So those uh, signals or power rails is part of the power sequence that we need to ensure all the requirements are meeting the uh, SOC uh, uh, recommendations or requirements, right? And then it's between those uh, power rails. So if you can see the, from the diagram over here, between the power rails and the sequence, we do have the time interval that uh, separate between two different signal and two different power rails. And these are actually is the specification that we, that we must meet. And I give a kind of a high level uh, example over here that I put a uh, weight angle over here, right? So actually each and every block diagram over here is representing the voltage regulator. So uh, the voltage regulator is actually it's enabled by uh, the enable signal from the previous voltage regulator. And then the uh, voltage regulator, like example, the BNN SD, SD here, is actually generate the power signal to enable another set of voltage regulator. And that's where the process uh, goes and why that's what we call the power sequence. And if the uh, uh, example like a VGC 1.0, 1.8 volt uh, voltage regulator is goes up first before the SV, that means it's really violate the requirement. 
So we need to look through the design and, and try to find the workaround or how to fix that, All right? And then why power sequencing measurement? So if you can see over here, there's a bunch of a power logic and also the signal block diagram involved in embedded system. So if, if, if you go for like Atom Core or even the Xeon products, right, or Intel's, so we have a very complicated and complex uh, architecture. So there's a bunch and hundreds of uh, signals and power involved uh, between the platform label and also the SOC label. And then this is uh, one of the example uh, that we have, like a power sequence diagram for uh, mechanical off G3 to N0. N0 means the uh, active mode uh, system, right? You boot up your laptop, your PC from uh, non-power for no power, and then you, you apply power adapter to be uh, active mode, right? So all the sequence involved uh, in between got their own timing interval, which is a part of the requirement or specifications. So we need to collect and timestamp each and every electrical activity across the uh, signal and power rails so that we can meet our SOC requirement. And then this is critical in order to ensure our platform is actually uh, functional well and without no functional uh, issue or reliability issue. So I move to the problem statement over here that we, we do have like five uh, high level uh, problem before we come up with these end to end solutions, right? And then the first one is on the complicated IA architecture. So from uh, years to years, we do have the, uh, you know, uh, a new generation of the product, right? From uh, from the SOC standpoint. So each uh, SOC has their own requirement, right? And there's definitely will be uh, additional IP additional configuration, additional features. Then every time we have this additional workload, uh, we, we added some of the signals and power on top of the product. So it becomes complicated, more and more complicated. We want to ease the validation effort that we create these POR tools uh, uh, as part of the solutions. And then second thing is the expensive equipment. So traditionally, we use the oscilloscope and uh, signal analyzer to debug our uh, uh, the product, right? So in order to validate our product, we normally use the typical oscilloscope. Uh, between, uh, we, we have normally like four to eight uh, panel for each scope, uh, but we have uh, hundreds of signal and, and, and power that need, that need to be debugged. So it's, it is quite, quite a lot of time to debug each and every uh, signal and power rate. And the third thing is the manual label. So normally, uh, Every single validation effort, we do it manually. We probe on top of the each probing point on top of the board uh, one by one, right? So set by set, like example, the limitation of the oscilloscope is only like four, up to four to eight different uh, channel. So we only can probe, uh, depends on your scope, normally it's four. So we can, we need to go for four by four different channel and power rail so that uh, to, to, to validate uh, the sequence, right? So this is kind of a thing consuming and we need someone uh, uh, engineer that really know how to interpret the data and know how to interpret, uh, compare between the targeted numbers and spec from, from product standpoint and also the measurement standpoint. And then the fourth uh, problem statement is the elimination of the uh, reference uh, uh, board and validation board. So CRB is a customer reference board and RDP is the uh, reference validation uh, platform, which is our internal board. Uh, so the quantity of these uh, bots and also the associate is quite limited across the team. So uh, in order to sort this out, right, so we need to one, one dedicated solution that uh, the system, one system can be shared among the teams or even our customer can share the, the platform to validate uh, from their end, right? So we need this kind of a solutions. And then the last lastly is the time consuming, as I mentioned before, it took a couple of weeks to complete one uh, uh, product validation. Because uh, those you know a setup and uh, equipment limitation, we took some time to 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 complete uh, the overall uh, power on. All right, this is the solution overview. Uh, what we have today is that we create kind of a tool that can emulate up to two channel uh, uh, comparable with the oscilloscope. Instead of using oscilloscope, which have only like four different pop channel, we do have thirty two uh, channel. Uh, uh, kind of a tools uh, to to uh, you know validate our platform uh, platform design. So and this tool is really is uh, just as big as your credit card. It's not like as big as uh, our uh, typical oscilloscope uh, in in the market, right? So 
And and the interesting part is that uh, the all the requirement that we define in our technical cultural is actually can be converted into some kind of the rule checking uh, table of behavior, right? And from this uh, rule checking, we we need to include all the requirement, the voltages, and the signal that you want to trigger, and some of the timing, uh, some of the time requirement that available for that specific platform into this uh, user interface of the tools, and then from this. Uh, well, we actually can convert it to a uh, JSON file, which is uh, kind of a, a file format that uh, include all the coding, and you can easily update the, the JSON file uh, based on your platform requirement. And then you can use back uh, and try to import in your user guide into your user interface uh, in order to validate uh, another set of platform in the future. So it's easy and flexible. And then from this JSON file, once you load to the uh, user interface, you can easily run your POR on top of your platform so that you can extract up to 32 channel or power rails and look through the uh, requirement, uh, I mean the behavior and compare with the requirement that we define in our collateral and as easy as that. So you can go for one round, uh, whereas the Oslo can need to run couple or multiple times to, to to get the same data. So here is uh, another set of solution. I'm going to pass to my click uh, YS uh, to move forward on this uh, section. So YS, over to you. Okay. Yeah. Then, then Amiru, uh, good morning and good everyone, every uh, uh, afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Then Amiru to present present this the problem statement and to the we power on uh, this is truth. I'm Yen Sim. In order for everyone to easily remember me, you can actually call me YS. Okay. In this case, a part of this uh, single power on uh, uh, the solution, another element which is the cloud-based remote debug, also one of the solution that we would like to call out from this proposal. So what is the cloud-based remote debug? Okay. So from this side, you can see the cloud-based remote debug is actually the delivery of the different service and end-to-end -end solution through the internet, which means the cloud-based debug Cloud-based remote but it actually enable the worldwide customer to access to the board, the platform, and the system from anywhere and anytime to the cloud, especially during the COVID pandemic. Okay, why? It's because during the COVID pandemic, a lot of the user or our customer actually could not travel. They also forced to work from home. They could not go on site. So this the cloud-based remote but is actually the best solution in order to help them to enable the, our customer, our user, to access the board system platform remotely to continue measure their power sequencing remotely through the cloud service. Okay. Through the remote power on this choice, it actually can help to save a lot of the time and the cost. Eventually, we can say it's more convenient for debug activity. Imagine if you stay in the, maybe example, you stay in the Yolo, okay. You want to have the board or power or power on that tool in order for you to test, right? But you don't have that. Actually, we, we do have this kind of the solution in Malaysia. So you can actually reach out to us, right? Then we can enable the service to you. You can actually remote in from your from, from Germany or from anywhere anytime to, to this solution. Then we can you can actually test the power power sequencing. Also, at the last point, don't forget the remote power on research tools also cover most of the power up and down sequence and the signal, unlike traditional equipment, which might only cover either one of the sequence. Okay. Yeah. Okay, in this page, I will share with you how user can access the board or the system remotely to perform the power sequencing through cloud-based remote debug. The first occur here, you can see, this actually the, the remote system or the platform through the cloud after we power up the, the, the system and the platform. So in this pair, you can see actually the this system is actually up, already boot up, okay? You already go to the uh, boot up page. So it, it, after this page, then the, the user actually can go to the BIOS or go to the, the OS, okay? The, the, the second occur here is actually the NUC host. Okay, this 
this the uh, NUG host actually installed with this the uh, power on is just two software. So what user can do? The user can actually access to this NUG host and then it actually connected with the, this, uh, the remote system or the platform with the circle one. And then they can actually perform the power sequencing test with the power on reset tool. Okay. So they, they also can use how uh, to capture the data or doing some debug to uh, this circle one and two. Lastly, the third circle is actually the cloud based remote debug portal. So a lot of people will say, how, how, how do I access to this system? Yes. This is the cloud based remote debug portal. The user can actually access to this portal and then they can actually search and make the distribution on the available remote system, which are really setting up with the power on research tool. So once the distribution done, the user actually can access to the NUT host and use the, the remote system, and then they can start to perform their power sequencing measurement and testing. Yeah. Okay, in this page, yeah, we would like to summarize the comparison between the conventional method versus the digital power on digital tool. But as you can see from this table, right, it's a hard cost saving about you know, USD 18K for each setup. If you just go with the remote power digital tool, you can see if using the power power research tool, it only costs less than 2,000 USD. But if you using maybe oscilloscope, right, it actually can cost more than 20,000, even more. So this is a little cost saving if you use this power on this tool. And then the spec requirement as well as the test method and the skill set also minimize with this remote power on this tool. And it's fully, it's actually fully automated with minimal experience skill set required on the setup and debug, which just now my colleague Emily was sharing in the previous slide. Also, okay, then the user also can save a lot of the time to complete the power sequencing execution and attaching to the remote power on the tool from week to day. Okay, because we, because just now I mentioned this tool is actually automated. So they can just run the test, then they will be, they can wait from the, for the data and capture it. Yeah. So this thing, this power on the tool can be accessed to cloud service. Meanwhile, the user no longer required to, to be travel or, or on site for any power sequencing test case. That means you will save a lot of the cost. They only require one engineer to set up and debug their test case. With this, user actually can save the cost. Yeah. Okay, here I would like to conclude our future plan to enhance our this, the power on this to solution. At this moment, our solution is still not applicable for this uh, FPGA. Okay, we only test on this, uh, the 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 atom core and ion product. Thus, we will post a new architecture on this the uh, FPGA based product. And, okay. Once the FPGA based uh, this uh, power on this search is uh, available, so our next step is actually to combine this solution. With, with this the cloud based remote debug. Therefore, you can, can use or our customer can remotely access to the, this, the FPGA with power on the test tool anywhere and anytime. So, we will also working on the enhancement to enable the remote power on the test tool the, to load set across the 256 channel, uh, signal and optimize the test capability on the AC measurement. So up to date, we have been proposed our solution on the few, actually few in Java. So next, our plan is actually to scale remote power on the test tool support across all the in Java product map, no map. Yeah, this is our, our, our computer and our future plan. Yeah. Okay, all right, last and not least, we would like to turn our VP director and our system manager who really supporting us on the power on the to solution. Yeah, without them, actually, we, we, we could not actually have this kind of the, the demo in this the conference. Okay. With this, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you very much.
Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Um, the question is why the two need hundreds of China uh, channels for measuring the sequencing? Uh, yeah, we, we do have a plan to upgrade these tools to up to 256 channels instead of 32. Uh, because, you know, uh, from years to years, our product become more complex, right? So we have uh, hundreds of uh, uh, signal and power rails involved in one architecture uh, products. So that is why instead of uh, go for 32 channel couple of round, so we, we, we would like to go for one round uh, uh, within the 256 channel. So um, out from our research, uh, it's, uh, it should be less than 256 channel for all the future products. So that's why we, 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 we come up with this kind of a plan. So we do want to reduce a lot of time in our validation efforts, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, is it possible to purchase this tool and use it for our project validation? Uh, yes, actually, um, uh, but, but it's not directly available to the public, just that if you like to, you know, purchase and use it uh, for your own project, you can reach out to the representative, they will uh, direct you to the respective um, teams so that you can get uh, the tools yourself and then try out, uh, we can provide all the collateral related like your user guide, or even the design guide to in order to enable the, the tools on your platform, so you can do that. Mm, okay. Nice. Um, could you share the link to assess remote power or reset to through the CBRD? Yeah, I think for this tutorial, I can help to answer. Yeah, first, first, of, first of all, thanks for your interest in on this uh, solution. Yeah, actually, you, you guys can actually reach up to me, Amilo, and Angie. Right? So we will actually share with you the link, the BKM, how to assess this uh, the uh, remote power on this to to the the this the cover remote but apart of this actually we also we will we will schedule a uh, this uh, onboarding session to you guys so we will share with you how to how to apply the this the access how to access to this system and then how to install the software and what kind of service or or, or this uh, uh uh tools is actually available from our this uh, the cloud based technology or, or service yeah. So feel free to reach out to me, Amiru and Angie. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to thank the sponsors before we uh, go into the sponsor hangout uh, with Smith. But uh, first, uh, JDT Technology Automation and Intelligent Integrated Solutions uh, Supplier. And uh, Smith Interconnect, your global partner for innovative semiconductor test solutions. Teradyne, enabling the next generation of technology through advanced test solutions. So I thank all of them for sponsoring, which have made this, uh, these presentations open to everyone free of charge. And I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. And Look forward to seeing you tomorrow and on Friday. So thank you. Have a good rest of your day.